Hello and welcome viewers to learn real world IT skill join jobskillshare.org. This is the platform designed and created for all IT learners and professional where they can further pursue their career in IT and even taking our courses and our lectures you could understand that what technologies really suit you and what are the real world skill and what are the need in the market in the job market and how could you transform yourself to become a perfect IT personnel so here in this video 3 we're going to talk about another question that might ask by the interviewer when you are giving the interview for the IT support position is what what is the difference and what are the way you can differentiate between the dynamic IP and the static IP so let's start but before get into the practical example I'm going to show you a short answers that you can easily memorize and understand and once if you ask about the short answer if it is the verbal interview so you can easily respond and reply back quickly but if you have to show some things so later on after these short answers we're going to show you some examples how you can differentiate and even understand the concept of dynamic and the static IP address so here in the next slide I have a chart here I create a table for you so you can easily differentiate and match the both difference of the IP addresses so here if we start with the static IP address in the static IP address what do you have you have to provide it manually so manually provided IP address are called static IP in contrast the automatically provided IP address are called dynamic because here as the word dynamic suggests definitely there is some sort of automation here and there is another protocol that works to provide dynamic IP which we'll later discuss then servers and other major networking devices are configured with the static IP address yes this is the best reply because the devices we need on the static IP address let's say for example you have a file server and the IP is changing continuously so how could you inform your all clients all user and most of the time in configuration in installing stuff let's say your SQL server and if you change the IP address of that server continuously so all the links that had been created with that server and all the connections will stuck so for servers or for other major networking devices we use a static IP address why because it won't change automatically but in contrast the dynamic IPs are the best solution for the mass of client machines where you have multiple client machines more than 10 more than 20 so the best solution is the dynamic IP address you could use the DHCP first in the first configuration of DHCP there is a little administrator intervention you could say human effort where you just provide the parameters to the DHCP and then it works on its own it works automatically and provide IP address to all client machines that are requested then it takes time definitely when you are configuring static IP address and later on in the video I'm going to show you how it takes time and what sort of windows you need to open so definitely when the static IP address concept comes there is a kind of effort and time consuming thing but in the dynamic the only one investment of time the administrator could do is during the configuration of the DHCP once the DHCP server is promoted it work automatically and it won't take time to provide IP address to any machine unless the machine is totally turn on the feature to get IP address from the DHCP if the machine is not set to take IP address from the DHCP so definitely you need to turn on that stuff then this is static IP address cannot change automatically but the dynamic IP address mostly change after a certain lease expiry so that thing you need to know in the DHCP in the dynamic IP address throughout there's a concept of lease right so once the lease expires then it might be of two days three days seven days so after that specific lease expiry the dynamic IP is changed and that might be this IP will go to other machine 
and your machine will receive another new IP. So this might happen. That's why these IPs are continuously changing and we don't use the dynamic IPs for the servers because we need fixed IPs for the server to locate the fixed network address. And that's why we don't use this dynamic IP address for these major devices. Now here in the static IP address, there's no concept of IP lease because you are there, the administrator itself providing the IP address. That's why there's no lease concept. While in the configuration of DHCP, administrator have to set a lease period. So during the configuration and promoting of the DHCP, the administrator required to add the timing of lease and he could manage this lease expiry. So there is a human intervention here to set the lease. Then in the static IP address, all the way human effort is required to set a static IP address. That means it won't change automatically. It won't be correct automatically all the way the administrator is required to configure to set. But unlikely in the dynamic IP address, we have the dynamic host configuration protocol DHCP, which is used to provide dynamic IPs. So this DHCP protocol is totally designed and mostly used throughout the network devices, even in your home routers. When your phone needs network connection, your phone just raise a request to the router and here the DHCP comes in action and it responds your query and provide IP addresses to your mobile phone. So the DHCP is all the way fulfilling and responding to all such queries and it removes all the effort, the manual configuration and providing all the required parameters that you preset during the configuration of the DHCP. So these are the short answers you could memorize and understand. And in a glimpse, you can understand the difference between the static and the dynamic IP address. Now let's move towards some practical stuff through you can understand the concept and even differentiate between the static and the dynamic IP addresses. So here I have practice lab environment. And for you, I already opened the domain controller where we can create server, where we design and add features that are required for the client. So here on the domain controller, how you can promote, how you can create the DHCP. So if you click to the tools, so you're gonna find the DHCP and it install with the installation of Active Directory. So when you promote your server, to have Active Directory, it automatically adds to your DHCP. Now here you can see under the domain, if I expand the IPv4 and let me maximize the window. So here you can see we have a scope, a scope is a pool, and we need to define the scope first in order to provide IP addresses. And here addresses lease, addresses pool. So if I go to the properties of the scope, you're going to find the scope name, the starting IP address, the end. And here you can see in the start and the end, here we need to set a range from IP addresses. Let's say you want to use the IP addresses from 192.168.0.1 to 20. So this is the range. So you need to define the starting IP address of that range and the ending. And it can be customizable. You can set any range here. Also, you have to set the lease here or you can make it unlimited, but that is not recommended because somehow there might be some IP conflict happen. So you need to set the lease here. So in the same way, you can see that we need to configure DHCP first. So there is a little administrative intervention required in the DHCP where you need to set these parameters and then it works on its own. And once the address leases, you lease any address, it will start visible here in the address leases. So you can further see here. Now let's move back to the client machine. And here on the client machine, we're going to see and verify that how to check it out that our machine is getting IP address from the DHCP, whether the machine have the static IP or the dynamic IP. So let's open the CMD and the quickest way with the, with the simple typing 
we could get the result and we get the output and we get inform. So command prompt is useful in all such moments where you need information in a fast, in a quick way. So let's say if I type IP config to know about whether the machine is getting IP address from the DHCP or some manual fashion is going out there. So if I type IP config space forward slash all, so you will see all the adopters are listed here. And right now we're using Ethernet 2. So the Ethernet 2 and Ethernet 2 adopters are attached to this machine. Now, if you go to the Ethernet detail that is currently working and providing this machine network access, Ethernet 2 is providing an internal connection, but the Ethernet adapter is providing internet access to this machine. So here you can see here that the IP address is 0 0.6, it is set. So how could we know and how we could judge that whether this machine have the static IP address or the dynamic? So the answer is simple and written here. The DHCP enable is no. When you find the DHCP enable is no, so it is definite that the IP address you're seeing here is what? It is a static IP address because DHCP is not enabled. And in the same way, if you want to see this thing with the help of GUI on a graphical user interface, so you need to click on the Ethernet and then open the properties, click to the IPv4, go to the properties. And now, once you get there on this dialog box, then you will determine that the, these IP addresses are static. And how? Because you can see obtain an IP address automatically is not selected here. But in contrast, use the following IP address is selected. That means that the IP address are provided manually. And here it is the same. The DNS address is also provided manually. Use the following DNS address. That's why this filling box is available to edit. But if it contain the check here on the obtain DNS server automatically. So the DHCP is now then become responsible for, for providing DNS address and for providing IP addresses. So with the GUI, you need to open lots of windows and you need to click on different sort of items to reach there. But here in the CMD, you have some basic command to run, execute and just determine that which IP address is running in your machine. And if you scroll up and verify the details of Ethernet to adapter, so you're gonna find the DHCP is enabled there and it is set to yes. So let's verify here in the GUI. If I close this one and cancel these dialog boxes and click to the Ethernet 2 and click to the properties, click to the IPv4, then the properties button. So here you can see obtain an IP address automatically selected and all the fill-in boxes are grayed out. It's not available to configure manually. Why? Because the DHCP is enabled here. So that's the verification and that actually telling you that what is the difference between the static and the dynamic IP addresses and how it's look and how you can verify both ways in the command line in the GUI to determine that which IP address is running and we discuss all the advantages, all the benefits we have in the static IP address and in the dynamic. In the last, let me discuss another major advantage of the static IP address and the difference of a static and the dynamic IP address is, let's say if I open this ethernet, this one, and go to the properties and click to the IPv4. So you see here that the following DNS server addresses needs to be used and set here. So there is a single address configured already. And this is what, this is the IP address of your domain controller, right? So in order to join domain, every client machine must need the domain controller address where there is an active directory located here in the preferred DNS box. So if you won't configure this 192.168.0.1, your domain controller IP address here, so you will not access to join domain. So whenever your client machine wants to join domain, it needs what? 
it needs domain controller IP address in the DNS server box, right? But what if the DNS server address is continuously changing? So if the DNS server means the domain controller IP address is set to dynamic and if it's changed daily basis on the daily routine or with the any time interval, so what happened then? Your client machine will no longer have access to the new IP address because let's say if we set this DNS address to be obtained automatically from the DHCP but here in the DHCP we have to define the fixed address for the DNS server there's no configuration there there's no option in the DNS server where we could set any sort of automatic configuration then whenever the DNS IP change so provide the new IP address to all the client there's no option for that so it must be fixed you need to use fixed IP addresses for your domain controller so you could use the same address in the DNS for all the client machine to join the domain so that's the major difference and that's the major use of this static IP address and that is making it different from the dynamic IP address so that's all for this video and I I hope that you cover a lot of stuff here and you even understand the concept and get the basic answers about the difference between both IPs and stay connected and please watch the video till the end and if you have any query and if you encounter any error while configuring this stuff so do mention it in the comment box we will definitely reply you and stay with us keep watching thank you